Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft PowerPoint. In this session, we're going to look at slide animations. So first of all, I'm going to click on the animations tab and we can see at the moment that they're all greyed out. That's because I haven't selected a text box. So if I select this text box, you can see that these are now active. If I drop this arrow down, you can see the different ones. So green means entrance, emphasis is yellow, exit red and then you've got more motion paths at the bottom and then each of the elements has extra options these are the extra entrance effects you can select and then you've obviously got extra emphasis exit and motion paths which I'll just click on because these are quite cool lots of different styles that you can use there now, I'm going to activate the animation pane, which comes up on the right hand side of the screen. This will show you your animations. And I'm just going to apply a simple entrance, float. Now, for most of these effects, you can add effect options like that, down, all at once, and so on wheel and then effect options like that for that one now i tend to use a feature called dissolve in which is not in this initial list so i i would have to go down to more entrance effects and select dissolve in and then there you see a little number one it's coming in all together um, effect options for that all at once by paragraph so that's coming in in blocks of two so that's how you add a simple animation and you can see it in the animation pane there now if I add pulse which is an emphasis what happens is when you click animation through this feature it overwrites the previous animation so now I don't have dissolve I just have pulse and then if I selected uh, an exit that would overwrite pulse and then you don't have the other two so in my classes I tell people if you're in a rush that's a quick way of putting something on a simple animation but to be more effective you should add your animation through this feature now before I start on that one, I'm going to delete the previous animation. Still need to click on the text box. Normally you don't animate the title, but you can do. The reason being is if you click a slide over and it is animated, there will be nothing there at the top. So unless you're absolutely 100% certain about what's coming next, you shouldn't do that. Uh, so you can see the title of the slide. Personal preference, obviously. Now, through this option, add animation, you have the same effects, but what this will allow you to do, if you select them from uh, from this option, it will allow you to layer the effects. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing with dissolving, more entrance, dissolving, click OK to that. Now, if I have a look at that in full screen, so you can just see how that would sit. So I'm now pressing my mouse and they're coming in as a pair and then I'm down to the next slide and so on through to the end now if you don't want them to come in as a pair you can have a look at effect options for this that's just a paragraph so it doesn't give you an option to come in individually like napoleon and then guards so to do that you need to use the animation pane which i've still got active and in there you've got a down arrow with effect options before i do that i'll just open these up so you can actually see all the items on the slide so in effect, you could do options, effect options for each element if required. But in this example, I want to apply the same effect for all the bullets. Effect options. So you have sound. I'm not going to put any sound on, on a bullet. That is very irritating. If every time you press your mouse, there is a noise. But this is quite cool. Don't dim. I'm going to get my 
my text to change colour when it's lost focus. Um, I'm going to pick a yellow colour actually. Yellow. And then you've got animate text all at once, yes. Timings will come back to an alert session. But text animation is where I want to focus for this. At the moment it's on level one, which means it all comes in as a paragraph, as you saw before. There's one, there's two, there's three. If I change that to level two, that would come in like Napoleon, then guards, then Ney, then cavalry, then Murat, and then artillery. And what I tell my classes usually is to go to level five. That will cover any eventuality. If you decided to do another indent underneath guards, you've already got it covered. It will come in individually. So that's what I want. Click OK to that. And you can see the preview there. That's shown. But what happens in full screen? Let's have a look. So now I'm talking about Napoleon. Press enter. Napoleon changes colour, loses focus, and then we're now talking about guards. Looking at that now on my screen, I probably wouldn't use that yellow, it's too bright, so that looks like Napoleon's still got focus. But you can see what's happening each time I press my mouse, I will get a change of colour and a new item. Now when you get to the bottom of your slide, there hasn't, another bullet hasn't appeared, and the last thing is yellow, which means tells me that that is the last item on this slide. So I always try and do that on all my slides. Even though I do tell people to try and keep to three points, sometimes that's not possible. So if you want five points on six points and things like that, if you've set this up like this, the last thing that you press will stay the, the, the fade out color. So you know the next click is a new slide. And that's how I set mine up. So there we go. Now, before, when I showed you using these animations, we could not layer the animations but now watch what happens if I click add animation and for example do grow and shrink so it's going to happen but it sits underneath the previous one it hasn't overwritten it so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these individually underneath each of the words so in fact I'll just do the first two so and then just play from from the top see what happens there so it's growing guys is growing and the rest of it comes in so if I do move them into position you can see this is how this animation pane works uh, and this can become quite cluttered you've got too many animations going on on the same slide so each one of those now another animation I would like is dissolve out which is not in this list so I need to select more exit effects dissolve out okay and the same process click on each one of these move them into position so after it's zoomed up it wants to disappear and same with that one same with Ney same with Cavalry and same with Artillery and we've got one there Murat ok so I think that's right but as always check it in full screen so press and enter should zoom up Next click should disappear. Next click. Now guards flashed quite quick there and disappeared. And then everything else is going to do the same. So basically the, the, the indents are coming on too quick and just flashing off. So if I press escape and have a look at why that's happening. So on Napoleon, Napoleon was okay. So that was on click. So I'm going to... Napoleon was on click. Yeah, I'm, I want that on click. Let's just do the duration a little bit longer for um, this. So let's add the duration a little bit longer on that one. See what happens now. So press and enter, zooming up. So dissolve out should be next. So it's, now it's a lot slower. So that's how you 
change the duration if your effect is disappearing too quick. You've also got a delay option there, so you can actually delay the effect and you can set this to come up automatically by selecting with previous or after previous, it's totally up to you. So that's how you do that sort of animation. Now, the other animation which, which we haven't looked at, I'm just going to get myself a blank slide, is the motion path. And to do that, let me just get rid of these boxes. So layout blank and then insert a picture. So I need to just get some photos. Waterloo photos, Dragoon. There's my little man. Just make him small. So push him into the corner. So the first effect, back to animations, the first effect is going to be dissolve in. So again, I'm going down to more entrance effects, dissolve in. It's totally up to you which effect you like, but I just think this is more professional. So that's going to dissolve in. Then I want to use a motion path um, to get them to move across the screen. So I'll use these default ones first. So custom, that will allow me to scribble across the screen. He's basically going to follow, follow this. And then to finish the scribble, you double click and then off he goes. So in full screen, you click, he dissolves in, you click, and he then he follows that custom path, off he goes. So that's how you do that. Now, that is just a quick look at a custom path, but in to show a better example of that, you may want to um, insert, in fact, let me just open Excel. If I just copy and paste a table from Excel into, into that, anything in here that we can use. Charting is what I'll use. So I'll just copy this table, which is about the Battle of Waterloo casualties. Just minimize that and just paste it on this slide. So there's my table. So now what I could do is I could insert a shape, um, like a circle. So I'll click on the circle. I'm just going to hold my shift key down while I draw this circle so I get a perfect circle and I don't want any fill so no fill I want the outline to be red and I also want my outline to be thicker than that so the weight I'm going to put it up to two and then I'm going to position it over this figure like so and then do the animation. So animation dissolve in is is the one I'm going to choose again. Dissolve in. So that will come in. Now I want to use an animation path. Not one of these in this list. More motion paths. Because there's one as you scroll further down that says right. Because I want this to move to the right. Click on right. Now I need to move it a little bit further, so you, you position your mouse over that circle and you can move it onto the total at the end. So now it's moved to there. Now I want to add another animation and I want that to pulse. So that should just move to the end and pulse. Now let's have a quick look at that. So it moves to the end and it's pulsed on a, on a click, okay? So I don't want that last one on a click, I want that to go with previous and I also wanted to pulse more than once so going into effect options and now I'm going on to the timings tab and then where it says repeat I'm going to change that to 10 okay now that should pulse 10 times so if I put that into full screen click, click the mouse and then it comes, so now I'm focused on the total for the 15th of June, 1815. Click my mouse, it moves across the grand total and starts flashing while I'm talking. Now you can do that with any shape, could be arrows, pointing at figures, budget figures moving up, moving down. It's a very effective way to present in PowerPoint using the custom animation or the advanced animation. That's the end of this session, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one. Thank you for your time.